NASCAR Super Trucks and the Southwest Tour Late Models. Full on, full contact sports. Everything to this point has just been spring training. The season starts today. TNN Motorsports presents live coverage of the Skull Racing Copper World Classic. The annual kickoff for racing on the West Coast has 237 cars, and already we've had three great feature events today. Check this. Last lap of the midget feature, Danny Drynan in white, leading Davey Hamilton trying to take it away. Off turn four, they get together. Hamilton spins to the inside wall. Cars come out of the smoke, scatter every which way. John Mahoney gets into the fence and comes across the track. Wham! John Sarn is up and over the pit wall. What a finish. Well, the super modified race, sleek, fast cars, a little more tame as Hamilton goes wire to wire over Pat Abel and Joe Gozik. Finally, the USAC Silver Crown feature in black and pink, Mike Bliss drives to the checker just that far ahead of George Snyder. It's Ziggy's fifth. Second place finish in the Copper Classic. Look at the blisters on those rear tires. Well, that's some of the excitement so far. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Joy, along with Buddy Baker, shivering here in the 85-degree weather of Phoenix once again. <laughs> and what a great day of racing we've got for you with NASCAR's Featherlight Southwest Tour and the Super Truck Series official point-counting debut. And, Buddy, I can't believe what a big day of racing this is and how big this truck series has gotten since we left Tucson just two weeks ago. Well, Mike, when we started the winter heat back in November, we were lucky to have 15 trucks in this event. Now we have 34 of the best trucks anywhere. Detroit is really, the big three is really represented well here today. And it's the first of uh, NASCAR's new series, the truck series, it's the most exciting by far right now to me. Well, look at some of the drivers that are here, not just the ones you've seen on Winter Heat, but here's Ken Schrader. Terry Labonte is here as well. From IMSA and IndyCar, PJ Jones. From the World of Outlaws, Sammy Swindell. From off-road racing, Walker Evans, and this is Roger Mears. And Winston Cup car owner driver Jeff Bodine had some space in his shop and some time on his hands, so he's built and brought a super truck here. But there's one driver who always seems to have a seat for the Copper World Classic. Let's meet him with Glenn Jarrett. And that man is Winston Cup star Ken Schrader. He's had how many victories here? <laughs> We've had eight, but it's been a while since we won here. <laughs> well, he's going to try to change that a little later on in the truck race, and the truck series is off to a booming start, Ken. Well, I'll tell you what. The very first uh, official points race here, we had a little over 30 trucks showed up, a good tight field, qualifying's tight. It's going to be good. Well, he's going to watch this tour race, and we'll let him go uh, buckle into his truck. We'll watch him a little bit later on. Thanks, Ken. And before I throw it to Mike, did I mention that it's 80 degrees? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody better. I'm delighted to welcome the newest member of our TNN team. Ernie Urban is going to call the Winston Cup races with Buddy and myself and join us for some of these special events like the Copper World Classic. Now, before you went east and went Winston Cup racing, you spent some time with these tour cars. They look like a lot of fun. I tell you, the Southwest tour cars are exciting. And um, I was really glad to be uh, involved with TNN. And uh, Southwest tour race is going to be great. He's involved in the trucks as well. He's co-owner of a truck Joe Rutman will drive today. Now, they put on a great show at Tucson on the 3rd, but how are they going to do here on the mile at Phoenix? I tell you, this this racetrack um, really makes for good racing, and uh, I, I expect that um, nobody's going to be able to get up and get a soda when they, this race starts. <laughs> Certainly not us. We're glad to have you with us. Thank you. Well, the pole sitter on these TNN winter shows, it's like the Department of Redundancy Department. Glenn, who's our surprise pole sitter today? Well, the surprise is no surprise for his fifth time here at Phoenix and umpteenth time this year, Ron Hornaday Jr. on the pole. New owners, Gary and Nancy Johnson, he rewarded them with the first place start. Uh, you guys are incredible. I tell you, I know, I, I think it's just TNN. You know, I come out here and every time we were running with TNN, we just do good. Uh, now, Goodyear came out here with a good tire. Wide roller maps jumped the board. Everybody just done a great job. You know, Dale's got the, a good crew under the super truck. Uh, this car here, I got a good crew. I just go out here, and all I got to do is jump in and drive them. So it's excellent. Well, when he jumps in to drive them, he does an awfully good job. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with the starting lineup for the NASCAR Featherlight Southwest Tour race. Don't go away. It's going to be a good one.
There is Ron Hornaday's car on the pole as the field rolls out for the Southwest Tour event here. 50 green flag laps. Let's show you how they qualify. Hornaday with a new track record, 131.4 miles per hour. Lance Hooper, also from Palmdale, California, on the outside pole. Row number two, familiar face from the Winter Series, two of them. Garrett Evans from Washington, Rick Crawford from Alabama. In row number three, that's Danny Crafton from California and Jeff Crow from Idaho. Never seen this racetrack qualified sixth. Bob Lyon from California and Scott Hansen from Wisconsin in the fourth row. Row number five, Kenny Shepard. He's a front runner here. So is Dirk Stevens from Washington, Bush Grand National driver. Chris Trickle from Las Vegas and Roy Testa from California in row number six. Row seven, defending champion of this race, Brett Bell and Brian Germoni, both from California. Ron Barfield from South Carolina and Terry Henry from Bakersfield. In the ninth row, Randy Olson's cow car and Toby Porter from South Carolina. Back in row 10 uh, was scheduled Rick Corelli, move up Frank Moronsky on the lineup and Jim Englebright in a Chevrolet. Row number 11, there's Daryl Krentz in a Chevy and Doug Reno, also Chevy mounted from California. Jason Fensler put his Ford up in row number 12 from California and from British Columbia, or whatever, the MK Kanky is there as well from California. Ernie Cope from the state of Washington and Troy Vandenbich in the Chevrolet also made the field through time trials. Mark Meach and surfer dude himself, Sean Monroe from Malibu, were the cars that qualified through time trials. Now let's take a look at the highlights from the consolation races held yesterday. They had two of them. The field was so big, over 70 cars here to qualify for the tour. Big three-car crash involving Harry Brady, number three, whose car caught fire. Uh, they took the skin off it today, and looking at it in the garage, the car's not badly bent. It was a brand new car, best one Harry'd ever had. And, kind of wadded it up there in that three-car melee that also involved Jeff Hillick. There's Brady climbing out. He was unhurt. They finished it off like this with Mark Meach winning that consolation event and advancing. Monty Martin getting the second spot. Troy Beebe winding up third and Ron Peterson fourth. Consolation race number two. Got off to a little bit of a bump and bang start, and then here running through the speedy dry, a bump, run, and spin. Scattered the field and sent again. Three cars colliding together. Uh, Shane Hall here moving underneath Chris Shannon for the lead as they came around. Hall had to start dead last in the consolation race after his qualifying time was disallowed. So here is Shane Hall going and winning the second consolation race as Brian Brown ends up in the fence. So that put eight more cars into the starting lineup from the two consolation races. The winners and the runners up here, Kevin Harvick, Dennis Dyer, Doug McCown, Frank Politelli made the show, and then Bill Lawrence and Craig Rodman and Michael Alsop were added to the field as provisional starters. That's the way they'll roll off here for 50 green flag laps. You're riding with Brett Bell. He is the defending champion of this race. Rick Martindale owns that car. Dennis Adcock is the crew chief. And on the strength of that great qualifying race win, we took our second in-car camera, popped it into Shane Hall's Oldsmobile from South Carolina. Rick Corelli was scheduled to carry that camera, and in fact, Corelli did qualify for this show uh, in 19th position, but they withdrew his car to fully concentrate on his truck effort. As he'll be in the super truck show and running for that championship. Looking for green for the first of 50 green flag laps in our live coverage on TNN of the Copper World Classic, and green is on. Quickly Hornaday in white on the inside with Lance Hooper up high. You see they're already four wide going down the front straightaway. This is probably the most competitive race that you'll see anywhere right here, the Southwest Tour. Hornaday, Lance Hooper, Garrett Evans in third as they roll into turn three. And a bit for the third spot. Evans has company charging up along on the inside. That's Rick Crawford from Alabama in blue. Number 14, Crawford will get third. Mike, when you come from Alabama, you're up to something. You better <laughs> believe this guy's in a hurry right here. He's already in third place. He'll catch the leader pretty quick, I feel like. I think he has a pretty good motor. Robert Yates builds his motors, too, so uh, that's uh, you know, pretty exciting. Crawford in third gets a little high there in turn four. Hornaday leads. Lance Hooper in second. Rick Crawford in third in blue. Right
right behind him in blue, Garrett Evans, number 64. Trouble on Brett Bell's car. The defending champ of this race is on pit road. In the Wonder Bar entry. And also Ernie Cope is in the pit lane. We stay under green. Boy, that'd be something to be the defending champion and have trouble this early. He's pretty much out there. He can go out and try to make up a lap here and get back in the frame, but right now he's in trouble. Looks like he must have been black flagged in a stop and go penalty because he just stopped and, and took back off. No repair on Bell's car, so he's he is out there. Lance Hooper is really putting the heat on to uh, Ron Hornaday Jr. right now. Looks like the two cars are very even. Of course, Hornaday gets in the corner, stays a little bit lower. Hooper gets a real good run up off the corner. Ernie Colt back out. He'll go one lap down. Let's check with Glenn. Well, thanks, Mike. The uh, story on Brett Bell, NASCAR penalized him, like Ernie said, for jumping the start, for passing the car before he reached the start-finish line at the green flag. However, Brett reported to his crew that the guy in front of him missed a gear, and he had to pass him to keep from running over him and to get run over. So just one of those unfortunate circumstances. He hasn't lost a lap yet, so maybe he'll catch a caution over. You're riding in the Wonder Bar wins four to Brett Bell. Well, Ernie, one thing, he's a lap down, but he's got to keep his cool and try to run this lap back and get in contention. So if they do have a caution, it brings him right back to the front. But there, there's no doubt, you know, um, if he stays as cool and um, keeps running hard, um, he'll be able to come back. Check out number 85 in white. That's Shane Hall. The young, you're riding along with him. Young lad from South Carolina, from Simpsonville, in the Lube America Olds, gave us such a great show at Tucson when he sat on the pole towing out from South Carolina. Nobody'd seen him on the West Coast and led 100 straight laps. Well, Mike, is a lot of Western Cup uh, race owners right now that are watching this guy because he's 25 years old, very articulate, and one heck of a race car driver. Continues to move up. He showed a great deal of patience starting last yesterday in that 10 lap qualifying race and coming to the front. Here he's moving past a Chris Trickle or moving up on Chris Trickle. Yeah, Chris got in the corner. He had the preferred line there. That shows a lot of maturity there to back out and not create a problem getting in the corner like that. Trickle at number 70. He's just gone past Ron Barfield in 99. Right down on the bottom. That car, Shane Halls, was actually the left front wheel was under the white line going in the corner. You have to have a good race car to have that happen. He was struggling a little bit here in practice. Uh, he'd never seen Phoenix, never been on the mile. Uh, Ron Hornaday came over and he said, well, I run these springs, these springs, and these springs. And Shane said, well, surely not. He says, that's what I run. He says, trust me. Shane put him under the car, came back yesterday, won the qualifying race. Well, that was a nice move off the corner there. Ooh. He just moved him around. Turn two. Lance Hooper and everybody gets past him. The second place car spinning at turn two and that will bring out caution. There's a spin in turn four as well. Number 12, Monty Martin has gone around at turn four and the field is going to get past him. Mike, unlike Winston Cup racing, they don't race back to the flag. The minute the yellow comes out, they go to the prior, prior lap to that. We will take a break and sort all this out as the action is fast and furious at Copper World. We'll be right back live on TNN after this.